My lord, I bring you a letter from your cousin, Duke Gilderic. Go ahead, read it, please. <clears throat> I do not feel that there is much difference between you and your father overall in the way that you manage your domains. I question his right to rule, and I question yours. If we cannot come to some kind of agreement, I will be required to press my claims against you and remove you from that lofty position to which we both know I think you are not suited. It, it's such, it's such an insult. Uh, there's more, my lord. He says that he wishes your brother Ververden to go to him as a hostage to maintain the peace between you. Ah, uh, uh, should I write to my grandfather and ask him for advice? No, I don't think so, my lord. I think this is a decision that you should make yourself with the advice of your advisors. All right, what do you think I should do? I think he's bluffing. You have the promise of Lotharingia to support you, and in a defensive war like this, well, they are assuredly going to send troops in your defense. He's bluffing, and you should call it. I think you're right. Yes, we will call his bluff. My brother will remain with Prince Goslin where he is. Hello and welcome, connoisseurs of Crusader Kings 3, friends of the channel and newcomers alike. We are here once again with Duke Egelfrith of Kent. Last time, our grandfather stabbed us in the back by moving the capital to Cornwall, a much, much, much less powerful duchy than the original duchy of, uh, of Oxfordshire. But there is something interesting about it. Cornwall has three castles because of a little fun thing that happened originally cornwall starts with two castles and we got an event a long long time ago before our king ricketts time that that basically built this castle so here he holds two castles which actually could be good for us because it does increase the possibility we have for for holding things on our own could be very nice we're going to also build ourselves another castle here which could give us a pretty strong base it does suck that we will be giving up uh, the university here. University is a very good building, but it doesn't really give us doesn't really give us that much that we need. I mean, we will lose the uh, the learning bonus, but that's fine. We're going to be excellent at learning anyway. We don't really need that extra. We already have a 19 and our education isn't even finished. We are strong now. We got that last time. We've been handsome and uh, robust the whole time. Our regent and I have been getting along pretty well. He actually likes us more than he did at the beginning, but we have been pushing back on him a little bit when he tries to overreach. We do not want him to get too entrenched. Our grandfather, of course, is participating in a war as a ally here over the county of Zurich there, which the king of Germany wants. But that is not our war, and we're not really participating in it. I think before we get too far into this episode, we should look at how the world is at this time. You can see Wales holds Lower Scotland, I mean Lower Ireland, and Scotland holds Southern Ireland, so Ireland has basically been cut in half. Although there is a Kingdom of Ireland that does exist and has formed in between them. Wales also holds the northern coast of Brittany, because we held that in our family for a very long time, and Old Man Dumnarth got it as part of his inheritance when... The kingdom was split up into the three great kingdoms of Cornwall. Down here we have a strong Leon. And a moderately strong Andalus. And it's interesting to see when the conflict between them will happen. We have a nice even split here. We have a young Germany. We have Lotharingia. We have West Francia and Aquitaine. The Byzantine Empire has actually grown to cover most, or at least half, of, uh, of Georgia. So, they're doing quite well. The great empires of the East are mostly split up. And yeah, that, that's the situation of the world right now. Pretty good, pretty interesting, I would say. We are the most stable. And uh, if, you, if you judge it by the center lands, we are the most developed section of Western Europe. Of course, the Grand Quest the last game to build a university caused us to have the extraordinarily developed 31 development Oxfordshire there. And uh, we live down here in Old Kent. A nice sort of uh, 
It's a bit of a backwater, but still nice. We are trying to convert it to our culture because Kent has remained Anglo-Saxon. It is one of the remaining Anglo-Saxon uh, holdouts. As you can see, we have the Anglo-Saxons, the Danelanders, the Welsh. In spite of living with the Welsh his whole life, Kingdom North has neither converted them nor changed over from Lioness. And the same, I think, is true of... Oh, that is a change we didn't know. Old Leo died. What did, he, what did old Leo die of? Died of old age at the age of 61. Huh. Still Lioness. Married to a French woman. Our cousin, King Odgar II, the beautiful. Still Lioness. Has now taken those lands over. I assume that he is the head of Carnau House. I wonder if he's going to continue his father's push into Scotland, or if he's going to let the Scottish be. I don't know. I do assume eventually he will take this. And he doesn't even have to, because this guy's doing it. <laughs> he doesn't even have to take that, that guy's doing it. So let's just unpause here. We are holding a claim here to Berkshire. And we have been saving on and off to eventually build a new castle here. Once we get back to three, 400 gold, which shouldn't be too long. Shouldn't really be too long at all. We are now 14, so we might begin to be able to sway. I think we can sway now, so we will. We're going to start swaying our steward. Try to get him onto our side. Let's look at our council and make sure we're all... We're doing useful stuff with them. That's fine for now. We have no control needs. We are still placing our culture. This is domestic affairs, which I think is the right thing for at least now. Our Reeve here doesn't like us, but he is changing his mind around. He disliked us so much primarily because we were the unpreferred heir and because he didn't like our father. And it's not surprising he didn't like our father because not many people did. Prince Sigurik here is, uh, is wounded. Like, seriously wounded. He is severely injured. Hopefully he recovers, but it looks like he's fine. Oh, he's poor. He's still a young man, though, so it's very likely that he's going to recover. I haven't even looked at our court physician. It is the bishop, and he is... probably okay, I would say. He's got, he's got the intellect, but very little else. The war... On the mainland is going very well, which is good. Hopefully we get this money up pretty fast. We are making four per month, which isn't bad at this era. I do find it quite interesting, the idea that we'll hold both of these. Kind of wish we could snatch this too. Perdain dynasty is known far and wide. You know, we haven't really looked at the dynasty so that we can remember what the legacies looked like at the end. So, mostly erudition, almost all the way to the top. Bureaucrats left, and then a little bit up here in customs, because we chased down shared ideals. So that gives us a good idea about what we're into, you know? We sort of fit that mold, too. We are a traditionalist member of our family. Task aborted. What, what happened? Why can't you? What happened? It converted. That's what happened. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and just when it converted, we gained that boon from him, which lets us build this castle we wanted to build, which is great. That leaves us with 91 gold left. Uh, if we look here, I don't think we have the power to build any of these things yet. We still need burrs, which we have no influence over at this time at all. We can meet peers again, which we are going to do, because it's a good idea to do this on cooldown. Let's do it. Hopefully we get a good turnout. Another war, a liberty war. Here, our, our old man is going to war to help out Mercia. Likely he's worried about more instability in Kernau Gladeth. Makes a lot of sense, you know? Old Grandpa has a lot of connections and a lot of alliances in the world, so uh, it makes sense that he'll be out there maintaining them. 
Luckily for us, we don't have much to do with that sort of thing. Yet, as such a young man, we only have our one alliance for our own marriage to uh, Lotharingia here. Meet Piers Gathering. Welcome. As the small lords and ladies are ushered into the room, I feel myself grow giddier and giddier. Yes! We have Gerthid. Kernu has come to visit us. He is, of course, Gerdelik's son. This guy has no problem sending his sons to visit us. You know, I think he's probably realized it's not a good idea to declare war on us. Yeah, I don't think... I don't think there's much he can gain out of that. Now you can try, though. Welcome. I did, I did piss him off a little bit last time by refusing his hostage agreement with my brother, but I would prefer my brother to continue to serve under his uncle. Made a friend. As children, you and Ferverdin, Kernu bonded while rifling through arcane scrolls. This is our brother. He is injured. He's wounded, in fact. Just wounded. Oh, he's obese already? How did that happen? Y you need to watch out for that. You're very young to be obese. That's not very good for you. We are exploring the local church when my brother and friend, Ferverd and I, stumble across my visive, Senrid, surrounded by scrolls. They are journals from long ago. Are you interested in such things? Yes, teach me about them. Yes, yes, yes. Teach me about them. Let's do it. And we gained learning. Very good. That should give us 20 learning before education is complete. I thought my cousin Barak and the peasant boy were merely pretending to fight, but suddenly there is blood in the dirt. Barak hits the ground with a grunt and the peasant standing above her moves to attack again. I will save her. Someone please help. This looks like fun. Let me have a go. No, I will save her. I'm getting in there. Yes. We have made another friend. Good. She's also scarred. Seems to be pretty common for kids to get scars around here. My cousin, Ophelsten, and I agree that trade is important, so we had this one last time. We're going to purchase a wear, please. Thank you. Another point of stewardship. Very good. This is going very, very well. Ball bounces past me, scooped up, backing into the waiting hearts of Buttock. Do you want to join? We've got a ball and we could do with some more players. A small crowd of kids gathers expectedly around us. I will join for sure. Yes. Oh, I bought a small book with me as I usually do and my brother and friend for Verdon finds me just as I'm settling down to read a few pages. Oh, it's that? Oh, the judgment of the stars? I recently read it. What are your opinions of the pros? Go away, I'm reading. I don't think so. This will be a good discussion. I don't want to upset him, but we are friends and I do want to read my book. I'm going to tell him to go away. I'm reading. We'll recover. It'll get better. Oh, this poor kid. He is actually at risk of dying. My brother is legitimately at risk of dying because he is somehow an obese child. Scratches and bruises? From playing rough? Somebody aggravated his wounds? Singular folk? That's fine. Fumbling customer? And he's obese. That's bad. I hope... I hope it turns out okay. Will you be quiet? Oh, this is the old man. So this time the old man is the priest. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Sorry, we'll be more quiet. 50% chance? Nope, no diplomacy for us. Oh well, it was worth a shot. What is this? Arranged betrothal between our sister. That's... That is a close marriage. Uh, they are first cousins. Which is extraordinarily acceptable at the time. And this is a really, really good match. This is literally... He is literally the heir to Wales, right? Yeah, this is like... This is the heir to Wales. I'm gonna do this. 
I don't think anybody would think a first cousin marriage during this period was a problem. Um, so we're going to do it. We're going to find that acceptable and let our sister marry so that she can eventually become the Queen of Wales. It's a good connection for the future as well. Keep strong relationships with uh, old man Dumnarth, our great uncle. Not even a first cousin, because that's two generations away. So that's actually further than first cousins. They're at least second cousins. Uh, everyone is going home, but we had a good time. We're going to see if we can convince Guthfirth to stay a little bit longer. And we did. All right. End of the fun. Until next time, everyone. Ah, what what a great little party we just had. We can ask our head of faith for gold because we've reached the age. How does the old pope feel about us? This pope has been an ever pope. He was the pope for a very long under time under Ricket too, and he is still out there poping out. He does have infirm now, and he's wounded, so I don't think he's going to make a hundred. But uh, there had been some hope. <laughs> he has scars over scars. What is scars over scars? Aggravated wound. Ah, because he whips himself. Of course he does. So we've gained some favor with our regent, which is good. It's hopeful for us being able to simply ask him to leave. Let's ask for gold from the old pope. Because we could definitely use it. I will use this wealth wisely. Yes, I will. Now, we don't have anything immediately to spend it on. But we will soon enough. Once this builds in four years. And it's good to have money on hand just in case something goes wrong. You know? It's always a good idea to keep ahead of it. Ooh, we've increased our intrigue because of our grandfather's wonderful pedagogy, and we are going to come of age very soon. Look at that. We're going to be adults before long. How is the old man doing? He is 70 and he just hit poor and he's gout ridden. <sighs> I do hope that we finish our education before he passes on, but I don't think he's likely to die anytime soon. He just turned poor, and it's probably only because of the gout ridden, so we'll see. Hopefully things stay... stay good for a while longer. How is our relationship developing with our uncles? So our uncle... Ilkarthen here is now liking us a lot more because we've begun the process of swaying him. Our uncle here also likes us more. Good, he's coming around. And all of our uncles are increasing in their liking of us, which is really good. Because they're going to have to be used to being our vassal, because right now they're our vassal, but then they're going to be our vassal as, uh, once we become king. They will probably be getting duchy titled out. At least one of them will. If we look up here, we can see Minver. That's Somerset over here is going to be duchy titled out. Because he is going to become Hweiss. Right? So when he becomes Hweiss... He will leave us, but the other two uncles will stay. Uh, because they will stay under Kent, which we will continue to hold. Hey, he's trying, at least. He's trying to get things done for us, you know? We should actually look at how he actually feels. He is... He, he's transitioned to selfless. He was not selfless under our father. He was self-interested under our father, which is really interesting, because that means that as... Now that he's selfless... We can probably just ask him to leave when the time comes, which is really what we wanted to have happen, right? We want a good, strong transition. We wanted him to, to voluntarily give up give up the position. Now, let's look at our other vassals here. Our, our bishop still likes us, and he's very good at his job. Of course, our steward is our regent, so we know he likes us. Prince Sigurik is starting to like us and the reeve uh sinrid is uh is starting to improve we gotta we gotta start thinking about our future you know demand hostage no i'm not doing it that's the second time you asked and i'm not doing it i get it i understand what it's about i'm not a kid anymore but no my brother needs to finish his education under my great uncle Okay? 
my brother has been doing very well under Prince Goslin. And so I think you need to leave him alone so he can finish his education. He's just a kid. <laughs> you shouldn't be using him to try to like, like, like put pressure on us. I don't think you're strong enough to fight us anymore anyway. Like, I don't think you are. If you think you are, make the move. Because I'm at the point now where I really don't think you are. So let's look at our culture. So our hyperculture is a combination of our original Cornish culture and some traits from Anglo-Saxon. We are city keepers, storytellers, so we educate our children well. We are dexterous fishermen. We have heards for the Huskarls. We have longbowmen for the longbowmen uh, men-at-arms as well. And then we have philosopher culture because we are a culture that is focused on learning and development. Wow, Lucarthen, you just got us 125 gold. You are doing very well. You are doing very well for us. I, I had my doubts originally. So we no longer have a wet nurse. We are mastermind philosopher. Look at us. Okay, we are no longer King Ricketts Ward. We are a man now. A, a man. Should we? I think we're going to go to university. I think for a very educated family like ours, it's a great idea. We're going to be the first university educated king of Cornwall. I think that's a great idea. Let's do learning and development. We're going to start with scholar, I think. We're definitely more aligned towards scholar than we are uh, pilgrim right now, pilgrimage. So let's do this. I think this is a great idea. Oxfordshire. We're coming. We're coming. We can afford the high study materials. We are going to study hard. I feel like we're going to customize our route a little bit. When we leave, we're going to go up around and then down this way so we're gonna go up here to Northampton we're gonna go over to the mines in Gloucester then we're gonna come down here to Salisbury and then we'll head home but that'll be after our trip to university which could be a long time and we're just gonna go. I think that's I think that's quite worth it. That's a great expenditure of money. A duel demanded. An imposing man is standing on the road ahead of us. I'm Argar of Canterbury. I have bested dozens of men in combat, and honestly, all those fights were dull. So I'm here on this road looking for someone to better me, someone I can learn from. I we have a 95%, 92% chance to win this fight, so we're gonna fight it, and we won. He is now one of our guys. Now, I think I think what we're going to do is we're going to immediately make him our second bodyguard. Because I kind of like his style, you know? Kind of like that. Challenging a lord, the literal future king of the kingdom to a, to a duel on the road. I like his style. I can stop him from eating it. Or I can let him do it. Well, I mean, I would prefer he doesn't get poisoned. Let's let him eat it. It was a harmless plant. Sorry, I mean, let's stop him from eating it because it's foolish to let him eat it. It's a harmless plant after all. There we are. So we're heading up to Oxfordshire to go to university to further our education. Following in the tradition of our family, trying to become the most educated man we can. I don't know. We definitely, definitely, definitely have a bowl of stew that we could eat. We're taking the chance. Ah, the food was amazing. So we are a liker of stew, a man who braves the stew. And we have reached university to begin our education. Ah, here I am finally at the gates of Oxford, the renowned university seat. All knowledge is collected inside these hallowed halls and scholars of repute from all over the world assemble in these same hallways to preserve and increase a true wealth of wisdom. And I'll soon join them. Of course, 
Major centers of culture are also active markets and offer all the distractions that a student could ever desire. Time to get started. All right, so we are here for half a year. What is this? Do we want to develop the capital? Do we have any way to lower our stress? We don't. I'm just going to not do this right now. We'll, we'll think about it afterwards when we're not at university anymore. Maybe when we have the money to do things like go on hunts and stuff. I'm suddenly distracted from my midnight studies by a loud crash and an ear-deafening slam and an expensive sounding shatter. What in the world is going on? The source of the dis disturbance appears to be two peasants. God knows how they got in here, ravenously gulping down a barrel of the university's fi refined hippocross. Thistle, hick, teach him, one of them shouts. Yeah, they'll think better than us just because they can read. I read that bad. They probably can read better than me, the other follows. Poor unfortunate souls, I will see that you learn to read. We lose 70 gold, we spend some prestige, we become more successful at our then they join our court, they both gain eight learning, and they join the university. I could use some servants to carry my books. Slightly more. They both join my court, they both gain an opinion of me. Better tell the teachers that or they'll destroy the place. So this is slightly more successful, cost more, and cost prestige. I think we're gonna we're gonna make them servants. I I like. Let's see how good these guys are. Ha! <laughs> sure. I could use more servants to carry my books. So while we're out here, we can we can keep an eye on the domain to make things. In just three more years, we'll have this brand new castle holding that we can develop, maybe to uh, house some of our men at arms. University visit, the guest speaker. Students, we have an esteemed speaker joining us today. My teacher, Othelstan, exclaims, let us welcome Archbishop Gershi of Cornwall, the utmost authority on Catholic doct doctrine in Oxfordshire. Greetings, Gershi. I think his name is Gherky? We'll try that. Greetings, Gherky. Starts Gherkai? Gherky. We're going to go with Gherky anyway, if it's wrong. Starts solemnly while straightening his back. Today, we will be exploring collecting rare manuscripts and how manuscripts and how it connects to the nature of God. Ha. Huh. The other students straighten their backs to and procure their quills. This is going to take a while. What? That's a heretical th thought. Furiously scribbles notes. What's a lot of stress. That is a lot of stress. The 34% chance it becomes massively more successful, and a 65% chance that they just get they just get mad. I think we're gonna we're gonna furiously scribble notes, try to learn from the old man. Hopefully, we get some opportunities to lower our stress while we're here, because <laughs> uh, uh, school is stressful when you take it seriously. That's just true. There's no denying that, and we are taking it seriously. Oh, he's getting influential. Let's use some of our prestige that we're holding on to to swing it back a bit. I should have ended the uh, <laughs> the Regency before I left. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Fine. Visit University the Goliards. As I'm leaving class after a deep thought-inducing class by Ophelstun, my attention is drawn by the chaotic laughter and screaming coming from outside. Leonard is leading a donkey along, singing its praise. A crowd of students replies, He saw Cyrus he haw after each line. When they notice me, they chant, Join us, join us. A frown on Othelston's face speaks volumes on his thoughts about the whole matter. This is outrageous. <laughs> This is outrageous because we are diligent. We get a little bit of a stress down, which we could use. It is outrageous. We're supposed to be here to learn. Why are you all here to party when I'm here to learn? I am possibly a little bit too serious minded. <laughs> Medium chance to upgrade. High chance to upgrade. Very high chance to upgrade. So that's what we're targeting. I think we're doing well so far, you know? I think we're doing pretty well so far. Studies are slightly more successful. Slightly more successful again. Good, we aced an assignment. We are we are we are pretty learned after all for a kid our age. People from all over the known world gather in universities and religious centers to gain and share knowledge, but this is made possible by the shared knowledge of a common language, usually some ancient language of 
Lithurgy loaded with traditional authority. Unfortunately, I'm not very familiar with the language of the culture spoken in Oxford. How am I not? I literally live here. Of course, they probably mean Latin as opposed to the language spoken in Oxfordshire. Uh, my studies are much harder than they need to be. So we have a 70% chance to learn Latin. To gain dial... I think we're going to do this. We have learned Latin. Good job, kid. Good job. Ha! <sighs> nice. We're doing pretty well, I think. We're not going to get that high, but we're going to do okay. My in-depth studies in Catholic doctrine at Oxford have confronted me with many new questions, not all of which seem to have clear-cut answers. Some even have contradictory explanations. Is faith supposed to be complicated by reason or not? Does faith only deal with the unseen or not? Can we even know what is unseen or not? Uh, completed by reason, not complicated by reason. Yes or no? There must be meaning in the contradictions. There's a 0% chance we gain stress here. It's a pretty high percent chance that we, uh... Let's do it. We gained the book artifact and became massively more successful. Good job, boy. You are... You are so amazing. You are such a great kid. Yes and no. A famed trinket gives us a bit of learning lifestyle experience and a bunch of other stuff. That's pretty cool. And we're doing pretty good here. Gonna be down to the wire. We've oh, got another event. The halls of Oxford University often echo with the debates of students and teachers, some which escalate into notorious rivalries, like between Ethel Siege and Ethelstan. When I find them today, they are, as usual, screaming at each other, trying to prove whose field of study is better equipped to discuss reason versus faith. Something less usual, however, is that they are suddenly notice me approaching and ask me to take a position. More successful. Rivalry. Okay. Okay. There are merits in both decisions. Oh, this will just cap us immediately. Ah. This is worth... There's no stress because this it's stressed down because we have if we get this do we get the 90 percent ah we impress our teachers look at us we are the most successful university student in the history of oxford university in our family uh, we are the first of those things uh because we are the first one in our family to actually go innovation Dever we lost the trait map we are an erudite oracle we did it we got our level five trait we learned a bunch of new learning perks. Let's see. When I left, I couldn't even imagine the number of wise men that study at Oxfordshire. The depth of their thinking, the breadth of their research, just being part of the same environment has made me a much better person. With my new gained knowledge, I can make my way home satisfied. However, during my stay, I've grown close to one of my teachers, Ethel Siege, and I loathe to part ways already. On the other hand, Ethel Stan has made a great impression on me, and I'd like to spend more time together. We're gonna bring either of these guys home? Or are we gonna let them stay where they are? I mean, Ethel Siege. Ethel Sieg is younger. He'll be around for longer. He is a great. <laughs> he is an excellent. Uh, he also might be a good knight. I think we're gonna bring him home. Come, join us and come home with us. So we increased our learning. Let's let's see what everything is. So first of all, we got our five-star trait. So we've gained three intrigue and we are at 10 learning. We gained plus one development growth per month. That's just great. Cultural fascination progress plus 20%. We're not doing that yet, but we will. And we've got a great chance to transition over into uh, <laughs> intrigue, which we're not, not good at. But we could become good at it, is the thing. Right? Like, we could become good at it. And let's see what the book is. Duke Eccleforth's Scriptures. Nice. 10% learning lifestyle experience. We've done a really, really good job at university here. I think we should consider this an extraordinarily successful endeavor. Now we're going to just go on a little bit of a tour on the way home, you know? Check out the old mines. It's a very, very famous location here in Gloucestershire, part of the 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 uh, 
kingdom for a long time. They we're going to go past Stonehenge here and head home after a wonderful experience at university. Travel what, duck? That's a good omen. Ducks are good omens. There's a long tradition of good animal omens and bad animal omens in our family. And it's good to see a duck on the road. It does make us feel more like good things are about to happen. We got a lot of learning traits, but I'm going to wait till we get home. Danger sticks in the wheel. Brook! I hear Odgar shout in a panic. Soon thereafter, I hear a crack. Crackling sound like that of wood breaking or of my patience finally snapping. I step out on the dirt to see the splintered remains of a wagon wheel. My wagon wheel. I'm sorry, my liege. It, it was my turn as lookout and I fell asleep at the reins. Uh, sigh. <laughs> sigh loudly while heaving the wagon wheel. Okay. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. <laughs> you gotta hold the wagon up, you strong burly bastard. <laughs> it's it's super necessary that you do that. So that's just happening. <laughs> and we have made it home. Look at that. What an excellent use of a year. The first thing we're going to have to do here is talk to our regent. Uh, we can do it through here. Get the I'm traveling. We'd like to... Uh, he's an 84% chance to accept nothing. The regency has ended. He's a little unhappy. Uh, I don't want to gift him one of my books. We don't have enough money to gift him. How is our swaying of our other uncle doing? It's fine. Okay, I think we're just going to leave things as we are. We'll patch it up with him in time. We've got time. So I've got tons and tons of uh, things to spend. So we're just going to go scientific. We're going to go pedagogy. We're going to go plant cultivation. And then we're going to hit scholarly circles. And then after that, we're just going to head down and finish all of scholar. We should get it done pretty fast, I think. Yes. Develop capital. I don't think that was the right time for that. Let's see, what is this? We're going to take this off because it's not very good, and we're going to replace it with the good book. We also have our scriptures here, learning per level of devotion. 10% lifestyle experience. This is fertility and prestige. And this is learning small health boost. I think we're going to take off this and replace it with our other book. Because I just think it's better. More learning lifestyle experience. Good. I suppose I could, now that we've changed around what we're holding, I could give him a prize brooch. I think that might be a better gift. And with that gift and that wonderful university trip, we are going to put an end to our time with Eckfirth here. The Duke of Kent, the old man, our grandfather up in Cornwall, is still in poor health, but he's got greatly reduced disease symptoms, so he's got some time left in him. He's 72 years old, but we're in no rush to become king. We're in no rush to become king. That's going to be, it's going to be a heck of a threshold over. Strange that we're going to end up being ruling from Cornwall, but that's just, uh, a decision that he got to make and we didn't. Soon, our second castle here is going to be built, which is great. And in these two duchies, we're going to actually be holding almost all the castles we can hold, which isn't a bad thing for a beginning position. We can always pass them on if we expand later. We do have the Berkshire thing going on here. We're going to depress it soon, though, because she'll be out of our reach once we're king. Oh, we can't declare war on the vassal of a vassal. And with that, I think we're going to say goodbye for now and... Uh, I hope to see you the next time that we are here with Duke Eckforth Ap Ressman of Kent, soon to be of Cornwall. Goodbye for now. Old Kingdom Narth still around. Did you know, young man, that I met your grandfather many years ago? He actually recruited me to come and serve at the university. I am certain that he would be proud of you. Oh, you knew King Ricket? Yes, yes I did. He met me in the courts in Scotland on one of his last great pilgrimages to Canterbury, I think. And 
He offered me a job at the university he was going to form. <laughs> Little did I know then that I would come to serve his grandson. Well, thank you, Ethel Siege. You were an excellent teacher, and I'm glad that you agreed to continue in my service. <laughs>